Bible says, you shall remember the Lord your God. Say, remember the Lord your God. For it is he that gives you power to get wealth. Say, power to get wealth. Talk to me. Say, power to get wealth. Your parents accepted poverty. That's why you inherited it. So it is your duty to reject it. He says in Jeremiah 22, verse 29 and 30, he says, earth or earth, hear the word of the Lord. Write this man down as childless. A man who will not prosper in his days, nor any of his descendants. And we come from such backgrounds where there was a decree, a decree of poverty. You must reject a decree of poverty. You must reject it. Say every decree of poverty, every covenant of poverty from my background, every agreement with poverty in my background, I don't know about others, but I reject it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever you accept remains. So one way to reject poverty is to speak it. Psalm 107 verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't just think so. Say so. Say so. Say so. Say I'm redeemed to prosper. I'm supposed to prosper. Hallelujah. Say I reject poverty, hardship, lack and want. I reject it in my life. I refuse to be amongst the poor. Poverty is not for me. I completely, and raise it, come raise it. Say, I completely and totally reject poverty. It's not for me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I say, praise the name of the Lord. Please be seated. There are poverty attitudes that must be broken. Attitudes. It's not just spirits, attitudes. There are poverty characters that must be broken. So that's why I didn't call the series fighting the spirit of poverty. Just fighting poverty. Because some of it is attitudes. Some of it is characters. Some of it is philosophies. If you are poor and you're philosophical, it means that your philosophies are philosophies of poverty. And you must reject them. Are you here? Proverbs 22 verse 2. He says, the rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of all of them. So we are not saying that if you are poor, you are not God's child. No. You are God's child. But why should you be in the department of poverty? Why should you accept to be the portion of, of, of poor people? Why you? Matthew 26 verse 11. He says, for you have the poor with you. Are they there? Some are in this service. Always. Did Jesus say it? So despite Jesus, you can be poor. I mean, Jesus was there preaching, but poor people were still there. That tells you salvation is not a guarantee for prosperity. Many say, I'm, I'm born again. Why am I poor? Jesus says the poor you will have with you always. Despite my being born, despite my birth, despite my death, burial, and resurrection, the poor you still have with you. Why? Why? Most poor people don't listen. Most poor people don't listen. Most poor people talk more than they listen. You don't believe? Proverbs 13 verse 8. The ransom of a man's life are his riches. He's getting an instruction. You, the instruction, watch this, is to pay your way out of poverty through sacrifice. You pay spiritual ransom because you and your family are caged. You are arrested. So you pay ransom the destruction, the ransom of a man's life are his riches. But the poor does not listen. He does not hear the rebuke. He says, I'm too poor to give. So he remains poor. I've explained that scripture. Is it in your Bible? I used to think it's rich people that don't listen. No, it's poor people that don't listen. We're talking about poverty. 
before we establish prosperity, we must deal with poverty. And if you are in Africa, it's in abundance. If you throw a stone in any direction, you hit a poor person. Any direction. Not just northwest, southeast. No, not, not northwest or northwest, west, north. Whatever direction you throw a stone in Africa, you hit a poor person. So God created them. But why are they poor? Ecclesiastes 6 verse 1 and 2 tells us there about how God has you know, given a man prophetic blessing, abundance, so that he lacks nothing. But then he says he does not give him the power to eat the wealth. God doesn't give you that power. You have to get it. You have to get it. Power to create wealth does not come because you are Zimbabwean. No. It doesn't come because you are black. It doesn't come because you are white. It doesn't come because you are Asian. You have to be aggressive and get it. Aggressive and get it. Aggressive and get it. Aggressive and get Get the power to eat it. Hey. You need power to drive a Range Rover. Power. There are cars that you don't need power to drive it. Just One or two thousand dollars here, you can drive. You don't need power for that one. You just need to have a little bit of organization. There are houses to live in them, you need power. You need power to get there and power to stay there. Because if you get there without power, you can be removed from there. There are many former champions in Africa. Their testimonies are 10 years plus old. They used to have power. So, power must be maintained. The Lord said, many people have got ideas to get wealth. Ideas. Good ideas to get wealth. Many have educational qualifications to get wealth. Many are selling products that must get them wealth. Hello? But they don't have power to get wealth. So education without power is a frustration. Products without power is a frustration. Services without power is a frustration. You need the power aspect. Power. That's why people in the kingdom of darkness consult. It's not that they're consulting the, the, the wish doctor for business ideas. No, they're consulting for power to back up the ideas. If you remove the battery from your phone, your phone is useless. Am I right? Even if it is the latest one. Hello? Could it be that you have the latest ideas with no power? The church is not a motivational speaking platform. No. There are many churches that waste people's time. Because they are teaching you what you can learn in the world. I'm not John Maxwell. I, I, I don't have time. Go and learn whatever you need to learn from him. And then come to me to get the power. Because if you learn things from him and you have no power, that's when you know you're a black person. There are principles that work for white people and they're not working for black people. Not because the principles don't work, but because black people, where we come from, we need more power. <sighs> yeah. And power is required. Watch this. Not just power general. No. To the degree, to the degree that is needed in this economy. Could it be that you have enough power that should work only in Europe? And unfortunately, you're in Africa. Where the, the devil lives in Africa and visits other continents. Power to get wealth. Do you have it? Do you have it? You shall remember the word zakah, Z-A-K-R. Remember, mark is first worthy. You shall give the Lord your God. It's not remember, oh, there's God. No, you must remember zakah, Z-A-K-A-R. That actually word, it means you must first fruits the Lord your God. For it is he that gives power to get wealth. He's already he's telling you how to get it. <laughs> so the devil fights you giving because he fights you getting power. If you are not a giver, forget about power to prosper. No matter how many hymns, hymns you sing. No matter how much you vomit in deliverance, no matter how much you roll on the ground, if you are not a giver, forget power to prosper. 
And the more you give, the more power you get. The more you give, the more power you get. The more you give, the more power you get. Because power is in levels. You don't need the man of God to tell you to increase your giving. You, learn, you need to increase it yourself. Lift up, that, lift up that US dollar note. Say, this dollar note shall be my normal offering on a Sunday. The Lord said something to me, Brett, this morning. He said, why did I say in Deuteronomy 16, 16, do not appear before me, em me empty-handed? He says, because if you appear before me empty-handed, it doesn't matter what you discuss with me. You are going without power to prosper. From that discussion, from that service, the service in which you do not give is a service where you can get everything else minus power to prosper. Because power to prosper comes by giving. So in Africa, many people are empty of power to prosper. In Africa, there's power to cast out, out devils. I do it here every day. I don't have a problem casting out devils. I've raised the dead. I've got that power. I, by the grace, we've pulled people out of wheelchairs without laying hands in this auditorium. So maybe someone's watching and says, ah, maybe he doesn't, he can't he prophesy. No, I prophesy accurate things. But the prophetic anointing is not the prosperity anointing. It's just telling you information or possibilities of things. That will only happen if you have power. Men of God, look for power to prosper. Otherwise, you are wasting God's, God's people's time. Wasting a lot of time. Huh? The, Rumi, listen to this. The Lord said to me, he says, a lot of churches are hospitals where people need a bank. You don't get it. How often do you need a hospital? When is the last time you were in hospital? So a lot of churches are hospitals. But what people need is a bank. A hospital does not give money. Your biggest problem is money. You are not sick. So the Lord said to me, focus on giving people power to prosper. Whoever doesn't want it can walk away with their poverty. And I have to be stubborn because nothing is more stubborn than poverty. It's so stubborn, it will fish your child out of a classroom because of school fees. You left your electricity making noise. In your house. Because power is about to run out. Nonsense. A child of God loves God, a worshiper. I mean, when I discovered this thing, you can love God and be poor. It's terrible. Loving God is not the seed for prosperity. There are many people who cry in worship, but after worship, they are crying with bills. It means they have power to connect to God, but no power to prosper. And it's, it, on some level, it means that what God told them to do, they are not doing it. Prayer is not a monologue, it's a dialogue. It's you talk, God talks. You talk, God talks. So when you pray, you say, Lord, I've got these problems. He tells you the seed. So if you lift up your voice and increase the volume of your tongues, so you don't hear about the offering required, you remain poor. Despite your deep love for God. One of the characters of poverty is poverty makes you hate wealthy people. You just develop an attitude. Many poor people don't like rich people. What is your attitude about rich people? No, let's talk. We're talking. What is your attitude about people with money? What you despise, what you despise moves away from you. If you hate rich people, wealth moves away from you. Why do you assume that everyone with money is stolid? It is an attitude of poverty. So that you are now comfortable with poverty. So that you say, me, I don't steal. That's why I'm poor. So what the Lord, Rumi, what the Lord taught me, and this is powerful. The Lord said, he said, when a person has got cancer. Can we talk? When a person has got cancer, there are symptoms. Am I right? Maybe they can feel nauseous or, you know, a lot of different symptoms. Say symptoms. 
So the symptoms tell you that that person has got cancer. Am I right? The symptoms can tell you a person has cancer even if they don't know they have cancer. So the Lord said there are symptoms of poverty. I want to share them with you. Because when I say we are fighting poverty, there are people who think that this message is minus them. No, it is especially you. Jabez was a man who was born in pain. Where were you born? Stop defending the poverty in your family just because your mother owns it. Love your mother but despise the poverty. He says, I was born in pain. <laughs> Give me verse 9. First Chronicles 4 verse 9. I want to show you something there. He says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. But you know, Julie, this is interesting. He was honorable but poor. <laughs> he was a nice guy but poor. I know many poor, nice people. Niceness is not the seed for prosperity. You need power to accompany it without being a nice person. He was honorable. Look at it there. More than his brothers. And his mother called him, not his brothers, Jabez. Because I bore him in pain. So he must, his name means pain. Imagine being Jabez. You're moving around your neighborhood. You're being called. Pain. Pain. Africa is the only continent where a child can be named poverty. Do you, do you not know Ananamo? You, you know, Namo. I have an uncle called Namo. A whole uncle, Namo. Named poverty. I mean, what are you thinking when you name a child poverty? It means that that person is stuck in that place and thinking that poverty will always be their portion. So they even name it a whole child poverty. If you have a name that means poverty, hardship, black and one sickness, you need to change that name. The, the, the register of company is not just to register uh, new names. It is there to deregister some names. Go and deregister that name. And Who told you you can't change your name? Changing names is in the Bible. What is your name? My name is Jacob. Trickster. It's a planter. It says, no more shall that be your name. Why? Why did he change his name? Because there was a discussion of blessing. So some blessings will not come on you until your name changes. Say, I refuse to be named after an affliction in my family. I refuse to be named after a season. I'm hitting poverty hard, unapologetic. Before I get into the symptoms, Micah 2 verse 10. Because I need you to reject where you are. If you accept where you are, you are not going to move. He says, arise and depart. For this is not your level. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Depart from this. Listen, stop accommodating poverty and giving excuses for it to settle. So the Lord is calling you today. Arise from that teenager car. Arise from that level of life. Arise from that level of income. It's not your portion. Hey, don't be lax in this car. Hallelujah. Look alive, somebody. Arise from there and say, this is not my portion. I reject this. Ebenezer, you have taken us this far, but you can take us further. Hallelujah. There are new models everywhere of cars. The house you are living in is not the last house. There must be a better house. Even if you move out and renovate that one, you must upgrade. Have a grace of upgrading. Wanting better things. In Africa, there's a disease where we celebrate small, small victories. There are higher heights. There are deep updates. There's real money. The money you are counting as notes. There are bundles. Bundles of US dollars. I refuse for this thing. The only bundles I see is RTGS. No. 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 A 
time is coming where you count your money in bundles. Bundles. You say, some cannot say amen. <laughs> I said bundles. I release the bundles grace. It must come upon your life. Bundles of US dollars. Why? We need to advance the kingdom. Shout, I reject this poverty. Listen, he says, arise and depart. Leave your father's house, Abraham. I don't want to be like my brothers and sisters. I don't want to be like them. So I left my father's house. Get out of your country. Hello? It's not relocating necessary, but get out of what is accepted in Zimbabwe. Get out of the level that is accepted for a black person. When a black person has money, they assume it's black magic. Not for you. You will rise by God. I said you will prosper by God. You will prosper by God's hand. Hallelujah. You will be wealthy, you will be healthy, and you will be holy. I'm talking about you. Hallelujah. It's a rare combination in Africa, but you shall be among the elites. May you rise to be healthy. May you arise to be wealthy. May you arise to be holy. So one symptom of poverty is always arguing. Job 6.25. He says, what does your arguing prove but this? There are people who are addicted to being right. It's a symptom of poverty. In your rightness, how far have you gone? You must reject poverty. So, arguing is a symptom of poverty. Why? Because the moment you are arguing, it means you have held a position. That means no one is going to move you from that position no matter what. So, even if someone comes with information and revelation to help you to prosper, you can't receive it. Therefore, you can't prosper. So all this arguing you do is a symptom of poverty. What are symptoms of poverty? No vision. If I just talk to you for two minutes, I can tell whether you, are, you have arrived or you, have, or you are going somewhere. A person with no vision is worse than a person with no money. Where the people lack a vision, what happens to those people? What happens to them? Is poverty perishing? So no vision is a symptom of poverty. You need to get a vision quick. Opportunity to blindness. Opportunity to, to uh, sorry, blindness to opportunities. Jeremiah 17 verse, number, 17 verse number 6. He says you shall not see when good comes. Poverty is blindness. He says he does not see when good comes. So, when you have the spirit of poverty on you, you can't see opportunities. You can't see opportunities. You can't see money-making opportunities. The symptom of poverty. Laziness is a huge symptom of poverty. There are many people who are too lazy to prosper. So they say, ah, less, less. Already that statement, I hate that statement. Many pastors are lazy. People don't give money to you because you're a pastor. They give money to you because you have impact. The level of impact of a man of God determines the level of resources in the life of the man of, man of God. No impact, no resources. Stop complaining. When you impact people's lives, they willingly give. When you are a minister with impact, resources come. I know a lot of men of God watch me from around the world. I hope you have heard what I'm saying. Say laziness. Laziness leads to begging. If you are lazy, you will beg. It's a guarantee. A few scriptures on laziness because this is a big problem in the body of Christ. Listen, giving on God's altar while you are lazy, it doesn't work. <laughs> they don't work. Proverbs 13 verse 4. 
Say, I refuse to be lazy. And the Bible says in, Thess in Second Thessalonians, I think chapter number three, he says, a lazy man should not eat. He says, let him who does not work not eat. In other words, if you're lazy, you're not allowed to develop an appetite. From whence will the food come? Second Thessalonians 3 verse 10. God blesses the works of your hands, not the words of your prayer, the works of your hands. If you are praying and not working, get ready for hardship. You will be a hungry prayer warrior. After you have dissipated energy in prayer, after much, much, much hard work, get ready to break that fast with a guava. A guava on a guava tree. Yeah, because many people, they want, I don't do one-on-ones, men of God. Do you know why? Because most of them are a waste of my time. Many people want to discuss their disobedience. They want to discuss their laziness. I don't have time to discuss. Come for the solution. Let's just ju jump all that discussion. Come for prayer shift where we solve the problem. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you getting it? We are going to eliminate poverty. We are going to fight it hard. And then you get business people who have got a lot of good ideas. Then they think you prosper by Zoom meeting. With the number of Zoom meetings you have had, yet you do not have one dollar to put your name. What are you discussing in those Zoom meetings? Prosperity does not come by discussion. It comes by power. 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 Many do not want to give. So they look for excuses. Many do not want to pray. People are lazy to pray. People are lazy to give. People are, they, they don't, don't want to fast. The yoke from your family, how will it break off your life if you're not going to fast? Let's just jump straight to the solution. Hallelujah. Poverty. How do I know a symptom of poverty? I know because you focus on the problem. And you are not interested in the solution. You are addicted to people feeling sorry for you. I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me. If someone is to buy me fuel, it is because they want to connect to me, not to help me. They want to connect to the grace, not to help the grace. Are you listening to me? I'm a walking warehouse of blessings. Symptom of poverty. Always broke. Always. Always broke. It's a big symptom. No money. Please don't get angry at the messenger. Always in debt. Always in debt. Even when you don't need to borrow, you just want to borrow. You just feel like borrowing. Someone just moves around selling chickens. You do, not that you need a chicken. You, <laughs> you are buying because there's a debt offered. You can pay end of demand. So because, it, it, not that you want the chicken, you want the debt. It's a symptom of poverty. You end up to, with those guys, what do they call them? Chimbazwa. Exorbitant interest. Those guys will be your friends. And when they want to harass you, they'll phone, they'll, they'll, they'll be there for a second. They'll phone you and put you on loud. And when somebody who you owe phones you, you have to be very polite. It doesn't matter how angry you are. Even if you woke up on the right side of bed, immediately you go on the right side. <laughs> For that phone call. <laughs> you have to be very polite. Young boy, 22 years old. Says, you And now you have to respect him. A 22 year old. I'm a 2000. Harassing you because you're in debt. Fight it. It's a symptom of poverty. Fight it. You need to go on a fast about the spirit of debt. Not to get angry at me because you're in debt. No. You fight the spirit of debt and say, Lord, I need to come out of debt. I need to stop borrowing because this, the, the borrower is servant to the lender, even if the lender is Amma 2000. <laughs> Procrastination. The spirit of tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is a spirit of poverty. 
You keep postponing what you're supposed to do. It's a symptom of poverty. Procrastination, the thief of time. And also the thief of opportunities. Excuses driven. There are people who are professional at giving excuses. Very professional. You have a lot of excuses in you. I don't want excuses. I want solutions. I hope I'm helping somebody. Lazy people make no impact in society. No impact. You can't have impact being lazy. Study to show yourself approved, men of God. Otherwise, you'll embarrass yourself on the microphone with nothing to say than just telling people things will work. How would they work? Jesus was not lazy. His parents found him doing something at 12 years old. He said, I must be about my father's business. While other children were playing there with toys and uh, what you call them? Those computer games. What do you call that computer game? PlayStation. Jesus was not playing uh, 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 PlayStation. He was playing prayer station. Not PlayStation. I'm still a child. Uh huh. Get ahead of the game. Don't be like other children. I asked my children for a scripture. I told them that they need to memorize the scripture. They forgot it. Hey! I said, you, you're not like other children. The scripture I told them to memorize is powerful. It's about a man called Bezalel. This guy was powerful. He was a, a man with a lot of skills. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go, go. Listen to this. Daniel had an excellent spirit, not an excellent talent. So that means that even excellence has a spirit behind it. Oh, I wish someone got that. Did you get that, man of God? Excellence has a spirit backing it. There are people who are just neat and tidy. They have excellence. Hello? But the reason why they are not paid for it is because they don't have an excellent spirit. They have an excellent talent. Daniel had an excellent spirit. I hope you got that. That is powerful. Hallelujah. May the spirit of excellence come upon your life. When you get into a, a, a room that is untidy, you must feel like something is crawling on you. Where others find it normal for a car to be dirty. I can't get into a dirty car. I can't, I can't stand a, a dirty car. Keeping a dirty car is a sign that you have the spirit of poverty on you. Because poverty likes dirt. And if you keep a car dirty long enough, it starts to eat at the paint. <laughs> Are you here, church? Are you here? Disorder is a symptom of poverty. Confusion is a symptom of poverty. Always confused. No solution. Because people thought that poverty is just having no money. No, it's just one of those things. It's just number five. But I mean, look, this thing. <laughs> Why are you always confused? It's a spirit of poverty manifesting through confusion because confusion will never breed prosperity. How can you make money when you're confused? Say, God, you're helping me. Bad luck and misfortune is a symptom of poverty. We are making a war against poverty. So, misfortune is part of the poverty package. Why do bad things only happen to you? Why you? It means on you is the spirit of what? Poverty. So you need to break it. I'm telling you this thing so you fight it. Hallelujah. Fighting helpers is a symptom of poverty. You fight people with the ability to help you. I want to listen to this. What the devil does to destroy people he looks at your life. He scans your life and looks around your life and sees who has the ability, who has the capacity, who has the love and the patience and the
the anointing to lift you. And he makes you fight that person or those people. Then you are friendly to all those who can't lift you. So, your fight with that person of greatness is not about the fight. It's not about whatever the argument, whatever you think you're arguing about. No. It's just to remove you from that person's presence. Hello? Because they are the one assigned by God to lift you. So to make sure that you're not lifted, the devil removes the lifter. Poor people are always fighting rich people. Go and check it. Hi, your boss is very popular. Hi, he's just, he's just lucky. He's just lucky. <laughs> How do I know someone is a spirit of poverty? They water down other people's success. You water down other people's success. You make it look like ah, it's nothing. Oh, that's a nice Range Rover, mother. I saw mother driving yesterday. Ah, Range Rover, Range Rover. <laughs> no, it's the new one. Ah, I saw a better one. Why aren't you driving a better one? No, that is 2021. Why aren't you driving the better one? Can you see how poverty is very crafty? Someone gets promoted. Ah, they slept, they were into it. You, ass you assume everyone, male or female, who's promoted, slept, they were into a job. Poverty. Why, wh why, do, why do people do that? Because, listen, when somebody rises in your environment, it's an indictment on you. It's saying someone who you went to school with is doing better than you. What's wrong with you? I, listen to me. Someone's prosperity asks you a question. Asks you a question. So you must fight it because these symptoms, listen to me, we need to attack them. If we've been borrowing eggs, chickens, Vaseline, ch stop that. Stop, stop that borrowing thing. It's a symptom of poverty. Symptom of poverty. This one will surprise you. This one will surprise you. Easily offended. <laughs> Very easy to offend. A small, small thing. Offend. <laughs> Hello? I didn't say offense. The Bible says offenses will come. But why is it easy for you? I've been maybe talking for about 45 minutes to an hour. I've offended you 17 times since I started speaking. <laughs> when you're easily offended, it, the whole thing is just to push helpers away from you. This job that you want to get, uh, the person who can connect you to that person is Nella. Ah, Nella, I don't like Nella. Why? What happened? Ah, you know, you know, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not what she said to me; it's how she said it. <laughs> Can you see? Can you see? So the devil, knowing that in your upcoming future, Nella is the one holding the key, he creates an issue with Nella. What are you arguing about, bananas? Bananas. That if you walk long enough in the forest, you can find more bananas. No one will charge you for them. It's not about bananas. It's about that key. There are people you should never fight. <laughs> are you here? <laughs> Susanne, are you here? There are people you should never fight. Let me say something. I know you won't like it, but it will help you. Tell your neighbor, just take it. Just take it. There's nothing there. Man of God, Sarah could not have a child. Hello? She's the one who started the discussion and recommended Hagar to Abraham. Abraham did not waste time. Two minutes. By the time she finished the sentence, Abraham was holding Hagar's hand already. 
going <laughs> into the bedroom. <laughs> there's, no, there's no wasting time. Hagar became pregnant. She gave birth to Ishmael. Am I right? Hello? And Sarah still had no child. So Sarah became jealous of something she started. Am I right? She was wrong in offending Hagar. But Hagar took offense from a greater person. Hello? And she picked an attitude with her master. Thereby she left the house of the master, mistress, offended. And what happened? The child began to starve because of the attitude of the mother. There are people you should never get offended at. Your boss, hello, your customer, your pastor, your helper, your president, your president, your president. <laughs> they say they don't like it. I told you, but I, I told you you won't like it. Do you know why you don't like what I'm saying? Because you are addicted to being right. Nah, Sarah was wrong. Can you imagine? This, this is how your statement is all day. Can you imagine? She's the one who started this thing. She's the one who was pushing me. She said I must go to the husband. Now that I go. And you know what was, hel what was, what was helping he uh, Hagar? It is the people around Hagar. They were saying, you see, you did what she couldn't do. She was trying to have a child for all these years. And you, two minutes, bah! You are powerful. You are more powerful than your master. That's what gave her an attitude. So it is the people around you that are kuchitirating your poverty. You can't allow him to treat you like that. How can an apostle talk to you like that? If he was a real man of God, he would package it nicely. I don't go to the school of packaging nicely to talk to you. I talk anyhow. The rich answer is roughly. I told you at the beginning I've got money. So rough is in my DNA. Put it up there. The rich answer is roughly. The poor man uses entreaties. He talks nice. But the rich answer is roughly. Of course he's poor. He has to be nice because he's poor. And this is the quandary. You need rich people but they are very rough. It's even in the Bible. So who benefits from the wealthy is the one who is patient enough to bypass all the roughness ah, and just take the honey and now you now deal with the bees. You'll be stung one or two times but it's okay because when the honey comes it's sweet. Why do you, why do you focus on the biting of the bees instead of focusing on the sweetness of the honey? Rich people carry honey with them they carry wealth and you need it. You are black like me. You need money. Yeah. You can never spend your attitude. <laughs> but you can spend money from a rich person. There are men you should never fight with. King men. <laughs> Hagar was told by God, humble yourself. Go and apologize to her. But I was like, go and apologize to her. There are people you need to go back and apologize to. Though they were wrong. And when you get there, don't talk about the issue. No. Because then you end up wanting to be right again because I know you. You just go there and say, excuse me, sir. Please. Still your child. I, what I need is your help. Forgive the fool I've been. You see, you see, you see, you see, you see him nodding. Yeah, 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 admitting you're a fool. You're right, you're a fool. Because only fools walk away from rich people. The symptom of poverty. What is the symptom of poverty? You can't be rebuked. You are angry when you are rebuked. Most of my sermons, you switch them off in the middle. After 17 minutes, ah! <laughs> you look at the sermon, it's 2 hours, 13 minutes, you say, ah! 
another two hours of this. <laughs> you think I don't know when you switch off my sermons? <laughs> A church that is not rebuked has no future. I can't encourage you in your foolishness. I have to tell you, this is nonsense. Stop this. So people who don't want to be rebuked, it is a sin to love them. Anger is a symptom of focus. Moses failed to get to the promised land because of anger. Stop worshipping your anger. You can't go far with anger. If you add the word D to anger, it becomes danger. Just put D as a prefix. Why are you so angry? You are already in danger. When you are angry, you destroy property. You destroy relationships. You destroy money. You destroy marriage. You don't really want to divorce that man. You are just angry. Chada, chada, ah, ah. By the time school fees is due, <laughs> you want again. And then another relative of anger creeps in pride. Pride and anger, they move together, they are related. Pride is a symptom of poverty. But you know what poor, poor people say? They say rich people are. Are proud because uh, uh, and uh, listen to the description of, pr of pride. He's driving his big car. <laughs> he lives in a big house, te 10, 12 rooms. Is it necessary? Is it ne no? Is it necessary for you to be in one room? Is it necessary for you to be in one room? He has two children but four bedrooms. Is it necessary? No. Is it necessary for you to have four children and one room? Which one is unnecessary then? I'm digging into your biggest weakness, your hidden weakness. You didn't know that anger was poverty. Very angry. And I think what also makes poor people angry is poverty. Do you know it's very frustrating to eat one type of meat the whole week? I don't know how you do it. Your whole stomach is green, Mavich. And it's not even for health reasons. Is it? <laughs> that is that Sazarek body. Why did they say that is that Maprozek body? <laughs> that is that Saza body. Not Maprozek body. There are no Prozek body in school. Saza beans. And then you've got to fish in the pool of beans to find a piece of meat. <laughs> when you find it, you are like that woman who had lost the coin. <laughs> Alas, the whole village rejoices. <laughs> Look, 15. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> ah, let me sit down in my expensive clothes. <laughs> Poor man, you know. <laughs> you, you, you have saved enough. You have, you have saved enough. It's enough. You get to a service station and your visit there is very brief. <laughs> the petrol attendant he just goes, chuku, chuku. <laughs> We look on that thing. Dollar <laughs> seventy-five. You give him two dollars. You are angry that he does not have change. <laughs> You have no earbuds. You use matchstick. <laughs> Do you know how dangerous matchstick is to your ear? Poverty is dangerous. <laughs> Poverty is dangerous. You go to South Africa by bus.
Poverty is so dangerous, it will make you get into a car with people you don't know. What a risk! You don't even know their names. <laughs> you don't know where they come from. You don't know what spirit is there. You just get in. At least in an aeroplane, they have registered their names. <laughs> if there's a problem, we can look for them. Seat number 15A, who was that person? You can find him. Try and find someone you met in Mkonga. <laughs> Poverty is dangerous. You eat expired food. <laughs> They give you coffee machine. They say, ah, sorry, it's expired. They say, expired. <laughs> expired. What is expired? <laughs> Bring it here. <laughs> you, br you, you just open a first aid box. You drink any tablet. <laughs> I would never be poor until Jesus comes. I have saved my time. I can describe poverty because I used to come from there. Do you know, I know how people must sit in a car so that they fit, even if they are men. <laughs> My parents, we used to have a fiber. Do you know fiber? You don't understand fiber? You're talking of ML, GL, coupe. There was no coupe in those days. It was fiber. Now, if you, if you Google fiber, you won't, you won't see the car. <laughs> it, fiber means different things in Europe. So if you Google fiber, you won't find it. But ask your neighbor, they'll tell you what fiber is. Fiber is basically a 504 station wagon. Hallelujah. No, it wasn't in those days. <laughs> it had expired. <laughs> no, you, at your house, you hated when it was in our house, it had expired. Because others were in Isuzu. <laughs> mm. So, to sit in a fiber, because there were four boys and four girls and two parents going to church to worship Jesus. So, the parents were the front, mother, father. Hello? The girls, they sat in the middle. Then, us boys at the back. You couldn't sit next to your neighbor facing the same direction. You had to sit. Your back is here. Your legs are there. Then the next one, your back is here. Your legs are there. Because your legs are smaller than your, this thing, you understand? <laughs> I think the Nigerian anointing is here today. <coughs> now I'm saying this thing. So, one sits here like this. The other sits there. So, four boys at the back. And you know, because we had mastered how to do it, we were now comfortable. It became normal. Could it be you come from a background where poverty is normal? And it is now so normal that you are supposed to use combi. That when I say you must have your own car, to you it registers as pride and unnecessary. Poverty makes you adjust. You might want to write that down. Because you have adjusted. Why should you have the phone number of a shoemaker? Why? Shoe repairs. For what? <laughs> a very proud congregant. They are no longer here. They said to my wife, they said, Hello, mom. She says, yes. Do you have any shoes that need tips to be changed? She laughed. <laughs> Change tips. Change tips of high heel. My wife. Me. How long does my wife walk? She walks in heels from here on a carpet to another red carpet there into Range Rover, Porsche. Uh, what are the other ones? Jaguar, S-Class, 
all the other toys. And from there, she walks from our garage to our bedroom, which is approximately 50 meters. <laughs> on tiles. Where will a shoe tips finish? Wrong pastor. Wrong pastor. Wrong pastor. You want a pastor you can help. Wrong pastor. You have a pastor you can connect. Not a pastor you can help. Poverty makes you adjust. Remove the adjustment. When we were young, our parents would be angry at us about our growing. Because you couldn't fit a, a shoe every term. <laughs> Africa is the only continent where parents are frustrated with the growth of their children. <laughs> they outgrow clothes. They outgrow shoes. We were once rebuked about eating too many slices of bread. <laughs> poverty, is, poverty is painful. We are talking about symptoms of poverty. Yes. One of them is anger at your children <laughs> about their growth. <laughs> Am I the only one? This concept of, you know, this trousers being three quarter, <laughs> it started in our house. <laughs> so when they say it's new fashion, I'm surprised. Because the more we grew, the higher the trouser it became the <laughs> That's why I wear what I want to revenge. <laughs> Man of God, I have 300 pairs of shoes. <laughs> Minus techies. And the reason I do, I do that is because when I grew up, I used to have two shoes. One for the left, one for the right. If a dog took my shoe, there was no church that Sunday. <laughs> bingo! No, 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 I'm going to say bingo. Bingo. Ah, ah bingo. Ah, bingo. <laughs> come, bingo. Come, nice. come, bingo. <laughs> I had to negotiate with bingo to bring shoe, <laughs> so I go to church. <laughs> Don't tell me about poverty. I know poverty. And in that poverty, we didn't want to be told what to do. A symptom of poverty. Ego. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's there. Ego. You want people to talk to you nicely. Yet you are poor. Nicely for what? What have you done in the economy? Can I give you wisdom? Don't be angry at wealthy people. Imitate them. Imitate. Copy. Even a fool copies from somebody who's passing in class. Poverty will make you comfortable around poor people so you don't feel bad. If you're the wealthiest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. If you're the wisest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Get out of that room. Go where you are challenged. Where they say a word you have to Google. Look at your friends. They tell you who you are comfortable with. You spend too much time with your friends from long back. That's why your life is still long back. God is saying, I behold, I do something. You say, yeah, no. We grew up together. Are you still growing? <laughs> Hebrews 6, 12. Be imitators. Do not be sluggish, laziness, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Imitate. Even the 
Bible is telling you that copying is good. But it's telling you who to copy. Those who have obtained, not those who have explained. Ah, if you follow the pastor, you know this out. You have just defined, de defined your, definition, your, your, your destination. You will soon arrive. You follow a mentor with no results. What is he going to teach you? What is he teaching you? Follow people with results. Even online, people follow results. Are you in the house? I'm taking my time because this is a series. We are going to fight poverty. Lest you think you are not poor because you've got a few thousand US dollars in your, in your, in your safe. Having money doesn't mean poverty has gone. It might be a temporary arrangement. And soon default settings will step in and relocate you to your proper level. So we are trying to change the level. Could it be that you have an attitude of poverty? You don't smile. say, hmm. you look 10 years older than your real age. When you tell people your age, you are, they are shocked. Oh! Mama, you are 25. <laughs> <laughs> A handsome poor man is ugly. <laughs> Poverty makes you ugly. You can't go for facial. 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 When is the last time you went for a massage? That is not a forced one on your wife. I mean, you just go there, you pay. A professional. Not your wife is just doing this. You'll be like, hey, psst, this man. <laughs> is this why he brought me into this house? And you know what poverty tells you? A massage is not necessary. It's not necessary. It's, it's all that adjusting to poverty. You need it. Uh-uh. Massage. The Lord said to me, he said, you know that poverty and prosperity can dwell together. Your level of success is dependent on how much poverty you have eliminated and how much prosperity you have put in. I want to show you a powerful example. Now, look at this. In fact, you just need to sit down the side. Yes. Okay. Now, I shall be happy about this. Give me something. All right. Lift up the glass there. Bucket, just put the bucket there. And the on her feet. Yes. Now look at this. If this here, yellow here, represents a tainted background or a poverty background. If this represents poverty, this is a black person. Right? Then this is a white person. Look at how clear that glass is. Lift it up clearly. Lift it up so that they see how clear it is. Okay? Now if this is the spirit of poverty here, a white person does not have much of the spirit of poverty as you, a black person, does. Right? So where a black person, where a white person gives $20, come, come, into an offering basket. Right? They're already prospering. So they've got more results from a $20 seed. Because they've got less, give me another one, spiritual cleaning up to do than you, a black person. So, this is the power to prosper activated by giving, given by a white person. Come bring it. So, they're already prospering. And the glass is very, very clear. Their life is clear. They've got properties. They've got opportunities. They've got favor. You, a black person, try this giving $20. <laughs> what has changed? What has changed? So where, where, if you copy what white people do, is they can give 100 US dollars. And you, a black person, also gives the same what? 
hundred US dollars. You then get frustrated because you are saying, but this thing is not changing. So a black person must give and give and give and give and give and give and pray and fast and come for deliverance. I've never seen deliverance in white churches. <laughs> and we keep pouring more word. You need more scriptures than a white person. Stand up, stand up, don't worry, stand up. It must look messy because that's how it is. Because you, a black person, you must keep on and keep on and come to prayer shift another day. Then you come another day. White people are sleeping at midnight. But not for you because you're a black person. So you have, I need some more water. You have to keep and, and praying and studying and declarations. Whereas in, in Kenneth Copeland's church, they can just say, I'm standing on one scripture. The wealth of the wicked <laughs> is laid up for the just. And they just pray a very soft prayer. Father, I thank you because I know that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Lord, I thank you for the grace for wealth transfer. And I know that, Lord, you love me and that you will transfer this wealth unto me. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Oh, God. <laughs> You're in Africa. <laughs> Father! <laughs> Wherever you are, <laughs> come down in your majesty. Jehovah, my mother was a Hittite. My father was a Jebusite. My grandmother was a wizard. And my grandfather was a witch doctor. So I call on the oil of God. And I command angels to stand in battle array. Even as I was praying at 6 p.m., but now it is midnight. Jehovah, I'm up again. Because you say, do not forget the stone from which you were hewn. Where are does Jehovah, they can afford to stop? Me, I can't afford to stop. Because my background is still showing. So I call on El Elyon. And I say, Jehovah, what my fathers planted must be uprooted. Even though white people have got nothing to uproot. Jehovah, I know from my background, I must uproot some things. I must uproot failure. I must uproot uh, uh, the demonic forces. Lord, I know that where I come from, there's deep witchcraft. So, uh, Jehovah, where others can give a hundred US dollar, I need to sacrifice a thousand. Call Jehovah even is the dreams of a black person and a white person are different. A white person dreams of doves. A white person dreams of nice birds. But Jehovah, I'm tired of owls. So because of where I come from, I call on the God who destroys owls. Jehovah, I finished midnight prayer. Now I come to prayer shift. Where others give ten dollar, I can't afford. <laughs> I need to package five hundred dollars because in my background blood was spilled. In my background, Jehovah God, I know that there are evil covenants. So because of this black skin, misfortune follows me, bad luck follows me. Even if I'm doing the same job as a white person, they are paid 10,000. And I taught them to do the job, but I'm paid 2,000. So Jehovah, I cry out unto you. And I say, Jehovah, hey, this yoke of poverty must be broken of my life. In the name of Jesus, I might have to pray a little bit more than my neighbor. I might have to give a little bit more than my neighbor. I might have to fast every week until Jesus comes because our backgrounds are different. And after all that drama, your glasses look the same.
So how dare you pray like your neighbor? As if you come from together. Where were you born? Who was your mother? Who is your father? You are in Zimbabwe. A place with no economy. A place that has broken all the economic rules and laws. Zimbabwe is a record breaker. Zimbabwe in the world is number one on inflation. And you want to give like you are in Canada. You want to pray like you are in Switzerland. So when I am telling you to be serious, it is because of where you are cutting from. You are not white. There's no white person in this service. The closest we have is Chido. But her life will tell you she's black. <laughs> Even if they pronounce it Chido. <laughs> Do you know even if you're in Europe, hello, you can change your name to Chido Johnson. But there's a section of the passport that says place of birth. And there it is not uh, 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 Rochester, New York. Uh, it's neither is it Dallas, Texas. Neither is it uh, 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 Lancashire or any other share. It is Hurungwe. <laughs> that means even your passport is telling you Hurungwe is looking for you. So since Hurungwe is looking for you, water, you better keep coming here and say, Men of God, <laughs> I know Hurungwe is looking for me. Because Hurungwe is looking for you. Watch this. To put back what was taken out. And before you know it, your present looks like your past. So you don't say, Why is it like this? You quinya your skirt. You roll your sleeve. And you say, I come from Africa. We are anointed to fight. We had to fight to get our land back. We had to fight to get our minerals back. And now we are fighting for our spiritual heritage. This contamination, I remove it. I remove it. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the African do? Man of God, you are always telling us to give. Yes, you are an African. Do you know how many chickens went on your behalf? How many goats? How many cows? How much human blood was sacrificed in your family? That's why I love Psalm 126. He who continually goes forth, not once and once, once and once off, no, continually goes forth, weeping. Bearing precious seed, not nonsense. Shall come again rejoicing. So you have to do what you are doing the whole of September. Continuously, continuously, continuously. You are vetoing the chickens. You are vetoing the goats. You are vetoing the cows. Once in a while, you take a thousand dollars. You put it on the altar. You say, nonsense. I've got to change this thing. Hallelujah. I've got to shift my destiny. Once in a while, you take a vehicle. You put it on the altar. Once in a while, you take some title deeds. You put them on the altar. Because you know in your family, you are not permitted to prosper. He said, write this man down as childless. This black man. A man who will not prosper in his days. I know where I'm coming from. If I want to die, I can, I just stop praying for one week. That's all I need. One week. Do you think I'm doing prayer shift for you? Even if no one comes to prayer shift, I'm here. Because I know, I know they are still raising incantation. I know there are seven altars working against me and my wife. And the Lord said to me, you need to raise seven altars. 
with a million US dollars on each altar. He said, because you and your wife every week are provoking satanic powers from the families of people you are delivering. So every week your prayer shift, you are getting fresh enemies, fresh enemies, fresh. I'll never stop giving even if you stop. Because I know what is following me. I know what is, uh, what, what is pursuing me. I know the blood in my background. I know how much my relatives hate me. They are still consulting to this day. As we speak, they are right now. And I'm the agenda. I'm focused spiritually. I can't afford to sleep from nine to nine. Because while men slept, uh, there are things the enemy does. God bless you, ladies. There are things the enemy does. Uh, but I prophesy uh, as we wage this war against poverty. Oh, I declare we must win this time. I said we must win this time. I said this time you must win. Raise up that note. <laughs> Say Jehovah God I wage a war Against every power Of poverty In my background With this note I serve notice on poverty I declare I decree By the power of the Holy Ghost I eliminate poverty i have to do extra more than what my brothers and sisters might have to do my destiny is too big i can't afford to be lackadaisical spiritually so i raise this money unto heaven as a sign that my money as it is the altar it must veto demonic altars that are speaking on my behalf by the blood of jesus i silence every evil altar speaking against my finances jehovah god all these attitudes of poverty the man of god was talking about i know they are demonically inspired from evil altars so today as i raise this money unto heaven jehovah god I cry out against you and I say, Lord, wage a war against poverty from my mother's side, from my father's side, wage a war against that poverty. Begin to pray at the top of your voice. Pray at the top of your voice. Lift up that money and pray. Hey! We have tolerated poverty enough. We are going to eliminate it. We remove the tears. We remove the evil background. We remove it. We remove it. We remove it. Lift up that money. Say, Jehovah God, every covenant of poverty in my family by the everlasting blood, the blood of Jesus, I revoke, I revoke, I revoke any such covenants. I revoke. Open your mouth and pray. I need to hear you pray. Come on, pray. These prayer points are crucial. <laughs> 